Judge Gray, thank you for participating in today's Civitas interview with us. Thank you for having me. And a first question, what do you believe to be the role of the judiciary? If elected, how will your understanding of your role manifest in your adjudication? Well, the role of the judiciary is very clear that it is to adjudicate, and um, which means in contrast to the legislative branch, it is not to legislate, and in contrast to the executive branch, it is not to um, enforce the laws. It is mainly there to determine whether or not the law has been followed and followed properly. And our next question, what impact do you feel the recent SBI issue will have on the efficacy of the judicial system? Should this cause North Carolinians to reconsider their position on the death penalty? Well, I think this question is going to be answered um, over time, but uh, initial reports would seem to indicate that, in fact, the approximately 230 cases that have been identified thus far, um, in the end, will not have as great an impact as perhaps one might think. Uh, for example, in Wake County, there were 11 cases identified. Um, only five of those cases ended up in uh, guilty pleas, and um, only one of those persons is still in custody. So if you kind of extrapolate those statistics in the rest of the state, um, I'm, I am, at this point, hopeful that it is not going to have a detrimental impact on the court system. However, if those petitions are filed, uh, they will be reviewed and uh, those people will be given an opportunity to be heard, which is the whole point. As regards um, the review of the death penalty, obviously that is a decision for the policymakers and the General Assembly, and if the citizens feel that it is warranted, they will, should let their legislators know. But uh, at this point, um, I don't know that statistically that will bear out. And our third question, what are your thoughts on judicial offices being made nonpartisan and about publicly financing appellate court races? Well, if I can take the second part first, um, I was probably the only reason that I would have uh, taken this uh, giant leap to running in a statewide campaign was the availability of public financing. Uh, it is the, the least attractive part of uh, running for office to me as a judge is having to ask for money. And without public financing, I probably wouldn't have done it. So I think it is a good thing if we are going to elect judges. and. That's going to be a question for another day for somebody to decide whether we should continue to do that. Um, I think the going to nonpartisan was an attempt to try to have the public recognize that when we are, at least speaking for me, when I'm sitting on the bench, I am not a representative of a political party. And whatever my political party affiliation may be on other issues, it is not there while I am participating in my role as a judge. And I think it has no role in the courtroom. And our final question, why should North Carolina elect you to become a leader of its judicial system? Well, I'd like to hope that North Carolinians would be interested in having someone with 31 years of experience, in my case, all three branches of government, which I think gives me a fairly unique perspective. Um, I also have tried to participate over the years in all aspects of not only my professional, but my civic life. I'm the past president of the Wake County Bar Association, the first public attorney to do that. I'm a current member of the North Carolina Courts Commission, involved in making policy decisions for the courts, and um, I think that I have the respect of my colleagues on the bench, as well as practitioners, in um, continuing my role of public service, and, and I would like to do that and think that I am the best candidate and that I should deserve your vote, and I would appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.